So I have had my walking stick for about six months now and recently I was at an event in London called Summer in the City and quite a few young people had come up to me and they were using walking sticks or a mobility aid and they said that seeing my photos of me and my walking stick, another young person, um, it gave them the confidence to use their walking stick in public more and not feel as ashamed. And that is incredible. I just posted pictures of my walking stick because I thought it looked cool, but I'm just so pleased and I'm so glad that it's had that kind of impact on some people. You have absolutely nothing to be ashamed of and I did see some very cool walking sticks at Summer in the City, so just be proud, be proud. So I wanted to make this video talking about my experiences of using a walking stick in public as a young person. I am 26 years old, although a lot of people think I'm younger than that. So I think people get quite shocked when they see a young person with a walking stick, because aren't they reserved for old people? <laughs> no, my friend, no. First of all, here is my walking stick. I love it. It is a harvest one. It was called harvest something or other, um, because it's got corn and pumpkins and mostly corn and pumpkins and maybe a few flowers, but it's just like this orangey red colour. I picked this one because I thought it would match or at least complement most of my clothes because I'm a very autumnal kind of person. A lot of people have been asking and I got this from walkingsticks.co.uk. Yes, that is an actual website. I was literally just googling where to buy walking sticks from and they came up and they had so many options. I had to stop scrolling because I was like, too much choice is a bad thing. Um, but I'm very happy with this choice and I get a lot of compliments on it, which is very cool. If you're out and about and feeling a bit nervous about having a walking stick with you and then people are like, that's such a cool cane and you're like, thanks so much. So if you can, I would highly recommend picking one with a design that you like so that when you are out in public with it, you can feel like a bit more badass. So the reason why I needed the walking stick is because of open abdominal surgery. So both of the surgeries that I had this year, I was unable to have keyhole, which has a much faster recovery time, but because of the condition that I was in, it wasn't safe to do. So open surgery literally means they cut you open <laughs> and that's how they do the surgery. Um, and when they cut through your muscles like that, your core just vanishes. And especially the first time round, because I was in hospital for a month and I wasn't eating and I was just lying in bed the whole time. So I had a month of muscle deterioration as well as my muscles just being cut in half. So for me, one of the biggest struggles this year has been having a weakened core. I am doing something about it now. I'm doing like very minimal ab exercises um, for like post-surgery and I definitely am feeling much stronger. Um, I'm not using my walking stick anymore. I don't really feel like I need it. And that is kind of what happened after my first surgery as well. So then I'm glad I kept the walking stick because then I had to have surgery again. So I needed the stick again. For me, there definitely gets to a point where having the walking stick is kind of like more annoying than it is useful. And so then when those two things cross over, I already stop using it. And I'll get onto a bit later what I mean by annoying. I don't want to make having a walking stick seem like a negative thing because so many people need it and it's a necessity. So yeah, I had a very weakened core and it turns out you need your core for a lot of things. And one of those things is standing up for long periods of time and walking. So when I was first out of hospital, all of the excursions and the walking that I would do would be around my local area and I would have someone with me. So I either had my mum or my dad or my boyfriend and I would hold on to them <laughs> and walk very slowly. And then I started to feel like I wanted to go out by myself um, and I also wanted to get on the tube. Like I wanted to travel longer distances. And it was actually my friend Connie who a year ago broke her leg um, said to me, get a walking stick. Um, so she helped me pick this one. So there are kind of two reasons why I wanted the walking stick. One, to help me walk. And two, to indicate to other people that I was fragile. <laughs> so one of my biggest fears about going outside <laughs> by myself was just the sheer number of people and how people could just like accidentally bump into me. And that just freaked me out because I was just thinking about how much pain I would be in if I accidentally got knocked over or if someone like rammed themselves into my stomach by accident. I 
yeah, that to me, I was just like, no, 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 I do not want that to happen. So I was like, walking stick, people will just avoid me. I should also probably mention that this is my experience living in London as well. So London being a very busy city. Oh, and then I guess like reason number three that I wanted it as well is because it was like access to my own independence because before that I was relying on other people to be able to go outside. So having a walking stick to me symbolized my independence after having a month in hospital relying on other people. So this was like me taking back my life. So now I wanna get into actually the everyday nitty gritty, my experience with having this walking stick and being out in public with it. I will say first and foremost is that I never really had any shame or embarrassment around it. I don't know if that's because mentally I knew having a walking stick was a temporary thing and I'm not sure if I would have coped differently if it was going to be a permanent thing. And also my baseline of confidence is generally like quite high and feelings like shame and embarrassment I'm not very familiar with. Like obviously I felt them, but around things like this, I'm just like, no, no, no embarrassment, I'm fine. So I guess the biggest thing and the one that I get asked the most questions about is do people stand up for me for a seat on the tube? <laughs> Here's the thing about people on the tube, and I am definitely one of these, is that we are so just like tunnel vision in our world, like on our phone or reading a book, whatever it is, everyone is like looking down, no one looks up. No one looks up. I will say that most of the time I just manage to sit down normally because I'm a freelancer and so I don't have to travel at commuter rush hour time every day um, unless I specifically have a thing to go to but most of the time that I'm using the tube is like in the middle of the day it's less busy so this wasn't something I had to deal with as part of my daily grind but it, I definitely had to deal with it so even though I just said I don't feel any shame or embarrassment around using a stick this is like the one time that I just feel so awkward and just like I'm ruining everyone's fun. Everyone's like silent fun reading on the tube. But I needed that seat. I needed to sit down. Standing on a tube for 20 minutes was going to hurt me a lot. So if no one was looking up and no one offered me a seat, then what I would do is I would just like try and make eye contact <laughs> with any people who were sat in the like, accessible seats um, and like kind of like have a little like, hey, look at my stick and then they would get up and sit down. One of my biggest worries, but this hasn't happened, um, is that I would do that, I would like make eye contact with the person and then they'd be like, I have an invisible condition. I'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, you sit there next. Because obviously by eyeing up someone who sat in that seat, I'm assuming they're able-bodied, but you never know. I only really have two really negative experiences from this because most of the time, someone will catch my eye or someone will see and they will stand up. It's not always the person in that seat but maybe they have an invisible impairment and so they can stay sitting there so on one such occasion i got on the tube and it was like the end of a carriage um so there's just two accessible seats it was very busy i was last on the tube this is also my problem is that i am not really in a rush to like get on the tube because i know i will get on the tube eventually so i'm usually always last on which means that everyone who got on it before me has like taken their seats and then i get on last and i'm like can you now stand back up again please maybe i should have been more assertive on like getting on the tube first but really do not want to deal with people like maybe hitting me <laughs> so i got on last this very busy tube and i'm there with my walking stick and the two people in the accessible seats just aren't looking at me. Like I'm trying to look at them, they're not looking at me. Um, other people have kind of like clocked that this is happening. And then um, a woman like a few seats down, like further into the carriage spots me and stands up and kind of offers me her seat. So then I have to clamber over lots of other people because it was so busy. People were like standing in between the seats as well. And by the time I had the train had started moving and I just like full on like fell over and like crashed into some other people. Everyone around me is like, oh my god, the girl with the walking stick just fell over and it's just like, but yeah, that was just really frustrating because that was completely unnecessary if like either the people in the accessible seats stood up if they were able-bodied or just like the next person along or the next, but it had to be like a bit further along. So 
that was super frustrating. What I always hope comes out of those situations is that it was a memorable enough moment for all of the people who witnessed it to like be able to recall that the next time they sat on a tube and someone with a disability or like a please give me a seat or baby on board badge like comes onto the tube and they'll like remember what happened and freaking stand up and give that person a seat. And the second frustrating time was on one of the like circle and district line tubes. So they're like much bigger. There's a lot more space in between the seats, but it was full. So you've got like rows of people sitting, but then like a much bigger crowd of people standing. And I get on, um, <laughs> so I get on with my stick. Now the thing is, is that I'm a very short person. And then my stick is like from my hand to the ground. No one is looking there. No one can see that because it's just covered with people. There's just people everywhere. No one can see it. For the first time, I have to like use my voice. And so I like say, excuse me, can I please have a seat? <laughs> and one woman just turned and looked at me, just at my face. So I don't even know if she saw the stick. She's just at my face and went, where? <laughs> And I was like, and I lifted it up and I was like, can I please have a seat? And like, I'm like saying this, lifting my stick up going, can I please have a seat? And no one budges. Uh, may I please sit down? Can I please sit down? Anyone? Can I please sit down? And then again, it was a situation where um, a young girl, like a few seats over, like stood up and beckoned to me and I got over. Um, didn't fall over this time. So that was good. But the whole situation, I was like, may I please sit down? And someone was like, where? <laughs> Granted, the woman who said that was standing up. It wasn't like that woman who said that was sat down. So like I said, the walking stick has its usefulness and then it has its annoyingness. Oh wait, no, so the usefulness is going down <laughs> and the annoyingness is going up. And my physical recovery was going well too. So it got to the point where I didn't want to use the walking stick anymore, but I still needed a seat on the tube. So I ordered from TFL a please offer me a seat badge and it also comes with this card which says please offer me a seat. Remember not all impairments and conditions are visible. Good work TFL. I don't know why but for some reason I feel more embarrassed using this than the stick. Like I would always have it in my bag and then as I'm getting onto the actual tube I put it on and I try and do a bit of a like and then I like take it off as soon as I'm off the tube. So in order to get one of these, you literally just order it from TFL, which is Transport for London. Um, you do not have to prove anything and it doesn't cost anything. What I will say though, is that myself and a friend of mine who also ordered one of these, um, is that they just never arrived in time. The original email that they send you confirming that you've ordered it has a phone number on it, being like, if it doesn't arrive within two weeks, like call this number, save that email, and call that number. Because as soon as I called that number and I'm like, my badge has never arrived. And they were like, oh, we'll get out to you tomorrow. So this is one kind of weird thing that I would think and that I would do when it was coming towards the end of my needing the walking stick. Um, please let me know if this is something that you do because I just felt, I just felt so strange and I was so mad at myself for behaving like this. But basically when you have a walking stick, it means that you've got one hand available to do everything that you need to do. So if you need to get something out of your bag, if you need to put lip balm on, if you need to tie up your hair or whatever it is, if you need that stick to walk, you have to stop walking, do the thing and then carry on walking. I would get to a point where I needed the stick as like a visible cue to everyone else, like don't touch me, don't come near me, I'm fragile. And I also would need it if I knew I was having a long day and I was going to be walking a lot because by the evening, I would be heavily relying on that stick, even if in the morning I wasn't super relying on it. I would be walking along and I would realize I needed something and I needed two hands to do it. And I could very easily just take the stick, tuck it under my arm, carry on walking and do the thing with two hands. But I didn't want anyone to see me doing that because then I was afraid that people would be thinking, why she got a stick? She's not really disabled. Look, she can clearly walk. And so I would just stop, do the thing, and then keep going. And it would just m make everything slower. I'd get places like so much slower, even though I was a super slow walker anyway. I just, I just, 
I just had these people's voices in my head, these hypothetical people being like, oh, well, look at her walking without needing the stick. Like, why does she have that stick? Like, she's fake disabled. <laughs> what is fake disabled? I don't know. Is that something that any of you think about? Because there are so many people out there who don't need their mobility aids all of the time, constantly. And I know that, yet still, when it comes to me, I feel like I have to be putting on a show constantly of needing it. Otherwise, people will question if I really need that seat or if, I don't know, I really am allowed access to XYZ. One of the other reasons why I would stop using it and switch to this is that I felt like once I was getting stronger and better at walking, if I then used the stick, mentally, like, I would feel like I needed it more and then I would walk worse. Does that make sense? If I didn't have the stick, I'd be like, walk, 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 this is great, da, da, da. And then on the same day with the stick, I would like hunch, I would walk slower. Basically, they just got to a point where it just wasn't useful anymore and it was actually hindering my recovery, I guess. But then I still, I still needed these because I still needed to sit down on that tube. Oh, I have a story about a creepy guy. I mean, like, this is, this is just like, annoyingly standard city life. So, you know, sometimes you get the men who just like randomly cackle. Other times you get the men who just like walk alongside you and just start talking to you and just keep following you and walking alongside you until you are like super firm with them and you're just like F off. With this guy, the thing that made him eventually turn away was me being like, I have a boyfriend. <sighs> Which is something that I would just say even when I didn't have a boyfriend. It's just like literally the only thing that often makes them leave. So this is something that I've experienced before, but this time around with my stick, I just felt so much more vulnerable because I couldn't speed up. This was quite early days when I really needed the stick and I was quite slow. He was just like walking alongside me, asking me all these questions, like my name, asking for my number, asking where I lived, stop it. Stop it. And I just felt like I can't speed up to get rid of this guy. I was walking so slow. Um, I mean, I could hit him with it, <laughs> like, but I wasn't gonna do that. Also, when I was out and about with the stick, I would get more strangers talking to me and commenting on it. But most of the time it was either compliments or people asking, <laughs> people asking, what did I do to my leg? <laughs> And I'm like, it's not my leg. And also, most of the time, the only other people that I would pass on the street who also had walking sticks were old people. And I wanted to like have a little like nod with them, just like, hey, sup. Um, but no, none of them, none of them ever looked at me so that I could be like, hey, hey, you know, look at us both with our sticks. So there's my experiences as a young person using a walking stick in public, more specifically London. I just want you to know that if you are a young person who needs a walking stick, there's seriously nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing, nothing. And if anyone tells you otherwise, just hit them with your stick. Don't do that, I don't condone violence. Thank you for watching this video. Please do give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I would love to hear from you if you are also a young person or any aged person who uses a mobility aid and how that works for you in public and how you feel about that um, and maybe if you've had any similar experiences to me. Don't forget to subscribe because I make new videos every week and I'll see you soon. Bye!